Well, Downsview, welcome. Good morning on a Thursday morning here at the church, out in the church foyer here, which seems like just yesterday, this massive wreath uh, behind me here was being decorated by Marla and Diana and Anastasia and some of the, the ladies at the church. And we were concerned back in March when we had our first lockdown that, well, we need to take this down because when we get back together and, well, we've just come full circle now and Iris has redecorated it again and it looks great. But just amazing to me, this is one of those aspects of our church that serves as a bit of a marker, a bit of an Ebenezer for me to just think, okay, Lord, you've been with us, and yet look at how you brought us through uh, another Christmas season. And a year ago, we were putting this up, and we are into our 10th month of this pandemic. But I do think there's plenty of reasons now for us to be encouraged. We seem to be into the next phase the next season of this if you will the vaccine is out it's not only been distributed in a number of countries around the world but health canada just approved it yesterday and lord willing within the next short while people will start to get vaccinated and of course that's going to take us some time but it feels like you look forward to the summer being different this coming summer than the previous one and by god's grace we're seem to be moving out of this we will be tempted to be more lazy and irresponsible now and not bother with our safety protocols and such because oh well there's a you know there's there's a, a vaccine out there so we don't have to worry about it anymore well no differently than we wouldn't cough all of, all over each other because uh, there's a flu vaccine uh, when we're feeling ill and nonetheless we need to take care even for the next few months and i think uh, elaine de villa our public health the lady who's in charge of our our public health here in Toronto said we need to be even more diligent now. And she understands that as a doctor, she also understands that as a student of society that what's gonna happen now is that we're more likely to back off our own diligence. Less people are likely to be as diligent and you know, I have every reason to expect those numbers just are going to continue to go up. Part of that is testing, of course. Glad to see the numbers in hospitals seem to be pretty stable. And God seems to be just moving us through this time. I, I, I mentioned that all because, you know, Christmas is, is, is coming and is coming quickly. And as the seasons change, there's, there's a kind of change that we all expect, isn't there? that just yesterday we woke up to a beautiful blanket of snow here in Toronto and by five o'clock most of it was gone and I was driving this morning and I'm looking around to find any I mean it's, it's almost as if it didn't happen and there's something about that change of season that on one hand we think ah oh, we don't look forward to the cold and the slush and you know the, the, the mess that's outside and the chillier weather at the same time, there's something real in my heart and yours, isn't there, about dreaming of a white Christmas. When Pam and I see a snowfall coming down, you see these big, thick snowflakes. They look like they're the size of golf balls. We say, oh, look, it's Christmas Eve snow. And there's been many times we've gone to our Christmas Eve services over the years and we walk out and there's that beautiful, fluffy, light snow just falling down. You think, oh, it looks so great. That's, that's what we look for. And we drive around to look at the various Christmas tree lights or Christmas decorations that people have in their home. There's a little bit of snow on them. Well, they, they look better when there's snow, don't they? You, you expect to see the, the change of season. You expect that there's a, along with that change of season in particular, there's just a different feeling. We haven't been in school for a few years, but I know what it's like to feel like, okay, the kids aren't in school anymore. There's something different about that. There's a different population in the mall and different population on the uh, numbers of cars on the roads, maybe that kind of thing. And there's a, there's a difference, there's a change. We buy different groceries because we know we're gonna have different kinds of gatherings perhaps coming up. We buy special uh, food in our home maybe. We have the Christmas oranges in our house again. I realize you can get the most of the year, but there's something about having a mandarin orange in your house at, at Christmas time. We have certain candles that are out and the different smells in the house because it's 
Christmas time. There's lights and such, obviously, that we put out in terms of our own Christmas decorations, but there's even different dishes that we can use. Those are the Christmas dishes, right? We, we can make use of those kind of things. And there's, there's just something perhaps even about the clothing that we wear. The ladies will often pull out their Christmas dresses. Uh, gentlemen will pull out their ties for Christmas time. Folks will just put out their, their red and their green sweaters because it's, those are their Christmas sweaters. Uh, to say nothing of the ugly sweater contest that there are out there. Many times folks talk about that. But all of these things are indications of a change. And as much as I think generally human beings tend to push back against change, there's something familiar and it feels healthy when there's those change of season and what's happening in our lives because it's a rhythm. There's, there's a rhythm in our lives that, that have these kind of changes. The, the pulse makes sense when these changes happen. And that's probably part of the challenge, along with a number of other issues, of course, with this whole COVID-19 time, is that those changes aren't coming as obvious. And the pulse is different. And the rhythm is not the way it, it used to be. And... You know, from a medical standpoint, when you have an irregular heart rhythm, that's a problem. It doesn't mean your heart isn't beating, but the, the rhythm is not the same. And your whole body is affected by that. And I think we feel that spiritually. We feel that in our society in general. We feel that within our church. Let's face it. This is a key time for families, for visitors, for others coming around our, our church again two weeks ago. A year ago, two weeks ago, two Sundays ago at least, we had the jubilant singer and orchestras here. You remember our church was jammed. There's people sitting out here in the foyer on chairs. We didn't have enough room downstairs in the fellowship hall into the Sunday school rooms. There were folks up here in the foyer eating their lunches, trying to find uh, room. We had so many people. We had so many people visiting. We, we sing Christmas songs that we never sing any other time of year, which I've always found a bit odd. But nevertheless, we, we feel that, right? And there's different kinds of decorations around the church and Iris did a fine job of decorating and yet most of you aren't going to experience it and we have perhaps the wonderful time with the children up front and the Christmas plays, the Christmas songs, Christmas pageants, Christmas Sunday school programs, whatever those things might be not to mention our Christmas Eve service. I don't know if you remember last year we had said for the two years previous, we had 10 or 12 people at our Christmas Eve service. And we said, well, maybe it's run its course. And it wasn't some great threat, you know, you need to come or else, but it was like, if we don't want to do this, that's okay. But let's stop pretending we're doing it if we're not going to. So let's, let's decide and let's vote with our feet to see if we really want to continue this service. And we had like 60 people here. <laughs> We had one side of the church all blocked off. We had to open things up, and it was amazing. And I thought, well, wow, people really responded. They said, like, we do like this, and you're right. We're going to lose it if we don't use it. And so folks, folks came, and I thought, what a wonderful thing to build on. We can't build on it this year. You're going to be watching from YouTube, and I hope you will. And I hope you'll be sending in your Christmas greeting videos to the church that I can pull together on a bit of a video compilation there. But all of that talk about change, brothers and sisters, does lead me to the thought of, of a verse uh, in the book of James. James is known, of course, so much as a, as, as a book that, that speaks about the fruit of the Christian life in terms of we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith, and yet we're not saved by a faith that is alone. We're saved by a faith that does that, that works. And yet in the first chapter where James is encouraging the believers to help diagnose if they really are genuine in their Christianity, he says in terms of where gifts come from, and he connects it to change in this way, chapter 1, verse 16. He says, look, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, 
listen now, with whom there is no variance or shadow due to change. With whom there is no change or who does not change. The Old Testament prophet Malachi will say that I am the Lord, I change not. And that means that the goodness of God is not something that is seasonal. It's not something that has a rhythm in that you receive from the Lord sometimes and then you don't. That he's extending his grace for a season, but now it's summertime and he's taking the summer off. Or it's coming back now in the fall, just like the kids going back to school. Or, hey, here comes Christmas time and God's mercy is about to be poured out again. No, no, he's saying, listen, the one thing that you and I can count on that seems to be constant is change, except when it comes to God. When it comes to God and his character, he can be trusted, he can be depended upon, he can be one to be counted on, that when we need and what we need from him, he will provide that. It's, it's such a bumper sticker verse sometimes, Philippians 4, 19, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But boy, when you put some feet to that and recognize it in the midst of some of the discouragements that you and I may be facing, some of the challenges at this time of year that things are not changing the way we expected, that the pulse and the rhythm of our lives are not exactly the same, boy, that should point us back to right. And God is always consistent. God can always be counted on to provide what we need when we need it. And, you know, during this Christmas season, it's probably helpful for us just to be reminded of that, of the consistency of God, and therefore the dependability and reliability of our God. He is honored as we depend upon Him, but the fact is that He shows us that He's worth depending upon because He just doesn't change like everything else around us. Again, brothers and sisters, thanks for your attention this morning. I do hope that you will provide us with a little Christmas greeting video. Get that to me by the 20th of December, and we'll be able to pull those together to show on our Christmas Eve service. Thanks, friends. Cheers.